नमस्ते रुचि नमस्ते बादल भाई हाउ हैव यू बीन रुचि आई एम डूइंग क्वाइट वेल इट्स या सिंग टू मीट इवन ड्यूरिंग लॉकडाउन ऑनलाइन एंड आई हैव नोन एंड आई हैव सीन योर वर्क फॉर मेनी मेनी इयर्स एवर सिंस यू वर इन बड़ोदा फाइन आर्ट्स एंड द काइंड ऑफ वर्क यू वर डूइंग देयर एंड नाउ सिंस मेनी इयर्स यू शिफ्टेड टू फ्रांस फॉर योर पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन एंड देन सेटल्ड देयर so it has yeah. been very interesting for me to observe your journey from the art uh, uh, practice in baroda to the art practice in france um mm-hmm. i was wondering if you would like to start by sharing about your art philosophy in general and how it has evolved uh well thank you very much for this uh, well i want to begin actually to talk about my quest which is actually uh begin with my uh, childhood experience i will say uh, with in india when i used to go and visit the temple move around run around and um, i was also practicing as a bharatanatyam dancer uh, well this two thing is uh, not uh, still um, i am not living with this kind of practice every day in france and uh, in my practice i have seen a very strong influence of um, sacred geometry but it is not that i am interpreting the this ideal geometry in my work but i begin to ask why it is there and um, well i go back to my past uh, about these two parallel experiences of how the geometry is been uh, implemented in the architecture of temple in india and how uh, the human body was uh, uh, flow inside this space uh, at the same time when i was practicing bharatanatyam i was observing that there was a kind of a precision between right side of the body and the left side of the body up or down it's like we have a very specific geometrical decision uh, divisions where we do the extension of the body and also we comes in the inside our body so this movement which are quite precise which has been uh, in the blood now it's it's not that i am super precise but it's more like i have this um, approach towards uh, uh, dialoguing constant dialogue with this empty space which is around me where i know that you know if i have to move in right side uh, i can do that i have just this option of doing it i can do left side different movement as well but this kind of a uh, uh, relation we have with the invisible geometry around the body and at the same time there is a uh, very uh, sacred uh, geometry which was already implemented in certain space certain part of the world what uh, our uh, relation today in our everyday life with this geometry which we can ask so being in france or being in some urban architecture i i begin to uh, question what uh, i can do more through my body or through my visual creations to understand and have dialogues with uh, or learn something from this space and i would like to have this conversation also with you because i have observing your work where you have uh, traveled a lot through your creative process and would like to also know more about you as well uh, how you know you have developed such certain practice and what you learn out of it yes certainly so i'd like to share by uh, going back to my design school days where mm-hmm. i used to study architecture mm-hmm. and in a class of 65 students one design problem would be given one design project mm-hmm. would be given mm-hmm. and each student would go back come back with a different design solution so the question in my mind would be what is perfect design what is the right solution for uh, for this design project hmm. so i would explore a lot by asking talking to my teachers uh, reading about art philosophies going to uh, art galleries and not only seeing art but also meeting artists and asking them questions about their art philosophy why is it that they painted this you know what is their thought process behind it i'd go and see a lot of art house cinema i'd see experimental theater i'd see art and craft exhibitions 
meet a lot of artists, actors, dancers, musicians, you know, learn, I mean, listen to a lot of classical music. So that led me into much, a lot of uh, philo understand, trying to understand a lot of philosophy of design. And that also shifted to philosophy in general. So I'd read Buddha and Krishnamurti and various other philosophers and mystics. Mm -hmm. What I came to the conclusion was that when you design with a pure mind, with a pure heart, right? Whatever design solution comes to that purity of intention, purity of mind, is the right design solution in that particular space time. And then a friend introduced me to Vipassana meditation, which is all about purification of mind. So I was very excited and I started practicing that and I really enjoyed it. And I felt more and more confident that I'm purifying myself, purifying my mind and heart and my intention. And I'm being a conduit of a higher force for design and creativity. So that's, so whatever I design or whatever I create, uh, there is, at, at the backdrop of it is my contemplation, a spiritual contemplation, a spiritual exploration. And that is what informs my aesthetics, my creative expression. And so the intention is that anything I do creative, uh, it, should, it should be a meditative uh, experience for myself, as well as a meditative experience for the viewer, for the user, for the experiencer. You know, how am I... What is my level of consciousness when I'm creating that work of art? And what is that work of art or design offering in that particular space, in that particular environment, and also to the user or the observer? You know, uh, I, am I helping raise consciousness? That is the main agenda behind my work, main intention behind any work that I do. So that's that gives you an overview of my um, design philosophy, creative philosophy, which is very much enmeshed with spirituality. Very interesting. Um, I'd like to understand because you spoke about your creativity and your design mm -hmm. art philosophy in general. Can you share some of your work and take us take me through a proce your process so I understand that better? Uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, actually, uh, just it reminds me one of my work which I have done in the. Uh, old city of Leel, very nearby where I live. And I, maybe I'll begin with the sharing the image. It will be more... Um... Can you see that? Yes, I can. Yeah. So, well, uh, I would like to share this work because you have also talked about the, the question of consciousness, the question of sharing, and also about uh, this uh, aesthetic values where... Uh, uh, I would actually say that this is this is a drawing installation. Uh, I call it conversations. Uh, this installation was actually done in 2018, where I have uh, actually we cannot say that I have isolated myself, but I was uh, engaged alone in this architecture for five days, but morning to evening, every day I go and I sit there and I just question what I can do with this verticality, the, with this triangle, with this square and this other surfaces which are involved with different kind of a geometrical divisions. What I can do that I can learn something about the human body and its movement in this architecture and about this architecture itself. What it can give new functions than simply, uh, you know, having a purpose of our everyday life, uh, actions which we do for example this is the building top floor of library a municipal library of lee but actually it was being abundant nobody was using it to keep the archive documents sometime it was being used to invite people and make conferences and this is how i come to know about this place what i liked about it is that the verticality which is um, uh, bringing towards a one center of the roof at the same time, the surface is uh, quite monochrome and flat. So in this way, I find that I can find different kind of extensions of my body. Now, the thing is, you can see here that there is a kind of um, something is hanging out in the something is hanging, sorry, on the on the floor or in the air. Actually, it is my hair. 
I'm sitting in this corner and I have attached my hair, uh, which is around six to seven in meter, if I can say for more simpler universal language, it's uh, like that can be the length. It's a true false hair. Now what is happening is that I am actually measuring the architecture once I arrive inside the, the any kind of a space. Here I have measured pillar, the length of the pillar, and the bottom of the pillar, you can, the, from that, the, the whole uh, distance between, of the floor between the wall and the pillar. But when I measure it, I don't measure with meter or centimeter. My unit of measurement is hair braids, uh, it's a hair loop also we can say. So each hair braid is one unit of measurement. So uh, I have measured, for example, uh, pillar length is 60 unit of hair braid. Uh, the floor length is 75 hair braid. And then as you can see, most of the architecture uh, in the world, we have 90 degree between the wall and the floor, between the pillar and the, the floor. So I like this idea of 90 degree because I can implement the mathematical equations. One of them is the Pythagoras theorem to understand where is the hidden triangle of 90 degree. So to find the triangle, I need three surface, A, B, and C. So I keep pillar as surface A, the floor as a surface B, and according to A and B value with my hair braid, which I just tell you before, I put them in the actual equation. And this is how I arrive towards the, 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 um, the final C. And that final C will decide what should be the length of my hair. So here I, you can see that I have uh, attached uh, different hair braids on my actual hair and I begin to f find the actual length of my hair according to the pillar. And then I'm trying to go maximum I can with the attention which I can create between the pillar and my head. And it's not something which is suffering because I'm not search searching something to just suffer myself. I'm just searching my limit, the limit of the body the limit of this organic measurement to find uh, my extension of the movement. But as I'm also uh, engaged uh, to share my work, what I prefer to share is the traces of the movement. So I draw, I make a very uh, ephemeral drawings with chalk, charcoal, eraser, di different, different works which are uh, different materials which are not lasting for a long time and I draw my movement. So here you can see that I'm trying to move in a very direction with keeping the And what I uh, arrive finally is a circle. So basically I'm making is a form of an organic compass which makes circle with the architecture. Once I finish this kind of gesture, I, whatever the angle I have received, I add the cello tape from ceiling to floor. So this is how we can see the unfinished cone, which is made by a particular uh, body and in particular time zone. So I make different kind of uh, ephemeral cones, or sometimes I also write down the equations of a square plus b square is equal to c square. And I make uh, uh, fragments of uh, drawings on the floor. And everything is in the always in the um, hair braid equations. So once you enter in my universe, you, we are uh, engaged to understand the architecture and the, the body and its relation through the mathematical fictional formulas. So I have actually, uh, as I'm not making a one image, my work is sometimes documented, which I don't really appreciate. But what I like that I do some movement, especially for the camera. So this is how I have choreographed one um, choreography for camera, where I have explained or certain movement I have exploited for the screen, which you can see in my Vimeo link just over here. And uh, yeah, these are just the glimpse of how I draw with the um, simple chalk and also in
different possibilities to find different kind of fictional formulas uh, which decide my length of my hair. So it depends upon the time or the energy or the space I have the given by sometimes the structure or by myself. I have made multiple possibilities of different length of my hair, which can make different kind of a circular movement. So these are one of the example of different possibilities of exploiting the human body inside the certain architecture. And this is how finally it looks like where I have um, many multiple circles with different dimensions and multiple uh, formulas you can see. The viewer comes and they go through the drawing, they move around the space. Sometimes I'm there inside, not moving, just as a live sculpture sitting. Sometimes I do mediation as well to, to find a discussion or learn something about my own interpretation or creation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, I would like to conclude here for this one of the work which I wanted to share with you. Uh, I would like to also know um, uh, your process of creation, if you can give through light on it, it will be interesting for me to also go further. Ruchi, I um, run a multidisciplinary design firm Mm -hmm. where we do a lot of work right from uh, creating brand identity to using new technologies for experiential marketing purpose like augmented reality virtual reality um, 3d imaging such stuff and i also have my own uh, art expression you know which is my which is a kind of a personal expression in my daily life um, which can be a photography or poetry or an article or a painting so I'd like to begin by showing you um, one more project of brand identity creation, which we did for uh, a yoga studio based in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. I'd like to share my screen and uh, show it to you. Is this visible? Yes. So, so the yoga studio is called Urdhva Yoga. And now Urdhva is a Sanskrit word which means rising of energy, ascending energy from the base chakra to the Sahasrara chakra. The base chakra to the crown chakra, the root chakra to the crown chakra. Um, so now I contemplated upon the word Urdhva, which is ascension of energy. And what my design, first idea I got was of a seed, which is embedded in the Muladhara chakra, which is buried in inertia. It is sleeping. So it's a black, dark seed. Now, with some divine grace, it has been it is it has been energized. So it becomes a red dot. So right, I began from a little black dot, which is an energy in inertia. Then the energy got, then the dot got energized with divine grace, so it turned red. And 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 also it was layered with the uh, word Urdhva written in Sanskrit, the alphabet U, which is of this shape. So I kind of connected that with a, with O and also with a germinating seed. That's how it germinated. That seed, uh, that little dot germinated and it has started rising up. It's, it has blossomed, a rose around, it has started rising up through all chakras and it has blossomed into a lotus at Sahasrara chakra. So that's how Kundalini rises. And I kind of layered all these metaphors in a contemporary visual interpretation and came up with this. So it is an it is a oo with the energy is rising and turning into a flower here. Can you see my cursor? Mm. Yes, I can see that. And this font which we have created, Urdhva Yoga, is inspired by the movements of the body in your, all the yoga postures. And uh, the tagline is rise and shine and is particularly written in this way because it is a seed in inertia, which is the reverse of food. And this indicates inertia. And right at the center on top is the germinating seed in a plant and a flower. Mm. And then I added colors to it, which are the colors of the base chakra from starting from base chakra, red to orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet the entire spectrum of colors. And this is the final logo uh, unit, which is created. Now, if you can see see the correlation directly with the meditating person with all the chakras uh, yes. 
you know, being energized. And this, as an viewer, sees this logo unit. The eye definitely moves from here and it just goes like that. And it subconsciously inspires them in, in that meditative zone. So this is, um, uh, uh, and the same thing was inter implemented in their, uh, in the graphics panel, in the environmental graphics in the studio, which was the center panel, which is a 10 feet long panel with, with along with the mantra written in the center, the logo, then the two panels of yogic postures and two panels on the other side for the um, uh, chakras. So that's how I evolved when I was given just the name of Urdhva, I evolved this logo, this brand identity out of it, which was a very contemplative experience for me, as well as a, when I showed it to the client, she was saying, wow, you know, I, I'm, I'm so delighted that this has come up. And all the people who see it, they feel energized and inspired into this yogic movement. So that's, that's the project I wanted to share with you. And uh, now I'm, I'm keen on seeing some more of your projects, Ruchi, if we can share some more um, uh, briefly uh, a few more projects. Well, um, yeah, I would like to share my screen. Well, I was thinking uh, to begin to talk uh, well about this interrelationship I have with my everyday life and the process of creation, how I reflect it in my practice and what inspired me to go or to question or to learn something about uh, my process of working. A oh, wow. of my grandmother. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's actually, I have uh, seen uh, this view uh, since my childhood. Uh, she never changed. Uh, I, my life, I always seen her same. So this stability of her appearance and also this um, hair braids, which was like a linear uh, experience for me. When I see each line, it's like it's leading me towards my source, my roots. So this photo is very inspiring for me because it has a very, it, it always dialogue differently. I can interpret always differently according to my mood, to my experience, according to the time I when I see this image. So. Well, uh, so she lives always in my heart when I, and also she inspired me to continue my, uh, my practice. So I would like to uh, share this with everybody. And then I said, how can I make it uh, something which is, um, uh, in, a, in a form of a volume, in a form of a sculpture, which is there, which is like, a, it's my tool as well. It's like um, somebody has a pen or paper or canvas or mud to make a sculpture. For me, it's this my tool. You know, this is my tool not only to make a drawing but also to measure to understand the world around me, and also it reminds me of my source. When I talk about source, I want to show this image. Uh, this is the time I when I was. Um, uh, carrying my baby uh, it was like almost like eight month of my pregnancy and I was completely surprised by this surface which was there which was in a form of a circle and also it was something which was um, in constant movement and it was it was like un to understand what is going on inside or how I can welcome my baby uh, also to what I can do to, uh, it's not like a um, decoration, but what I can do to have a very precise or uh, something which is balanced in this uh, process of creation. So, well, this work is, uh, for me, it is um, important because it's also uh, ephemeral for me. The drawing which I made, it's called Mehdi. Usually we use this as a traditional um, drawing on hands and legs um, for a very particular rituals and occasions and for me this was the one of the um, very important occasion and um, so I wanted to live differently uh, and uh, for me visual present visual experience of, of those movements or um, the the body how the body emphasize certain kind of uh, 
the dialogues with my own self or with the world exteriors so i was trying to understand with this photography it's a collaboration with my uh, husband david ayun where we have done this photography because this is also very important once i do the gesture we need to understand how to share with the world and if i want to share uh, so idea was to have a very particular studio um, background and very direct directional light to find this photographic element well when yeah <laughs> yes as i said yeah this is also like the relation with the floor this relation with the temporality and how human body and the innocence gestures how they interact with the material how the the image disappear and how the body is uh, re choreographed according to the division of space many things are happening when i uh, i learn when i am trying to do something with um, my everyday life um, activities well this is i, I it, sometimes i come to something sometimes i don't learn something as well it's or i don't arrive to something very finished i would like to sh share this work also because i have Uh, also worked with some another person who helped me to draw with her own hair to see what other expressive experience i can get and uh, just to understand where i am in my quest uh, to learn more yeah mm. would you like to um share some uh, some works of you your work has been interesting and i would like to share some of my work now Um, yeah okay so i um, would like to share um, my creative response to um, everyday events daily events or everyday experiences one of the events with festivals is uh, diwali in india and most people draw a rangoli on the floor either with powder colors or with flowers and place diyas and it is a new moon night like new moon night so there's there's no moon in the sky so i said when th there's no moon how how can one um and, and it's a festival of light so um how is it that one can my, my contemplation led me into thinking that it, I, i write tiny poems some almost like haikus so, so i said on this moonless night let's celebrate inner radiance So therefore, I created a kind of a rangoli, a meditative person, um, with yellow flowers and uh, um, the marigold flowers, the light yellow color and the orange color. And at every chakra, I place a candle, which is the festival in the festival of light Diwali we do place. So this is a creative response uh, in a way contemporary as well as a spiritual manner to. Diwali, the festival of Diwali. Most people would create a mandala, a traditional mandala design, but I thought I'd create uh, a meditating person with each and every chakra being lit. So this is a night view, and at the day I replace the candle with flowers again. Um, so again, an another work of art is uh, again out of a meditating person. How the heart blossoms. So this is the acrylic acrylic on canvas, a painting. and uh, it is a meditative person whose heart is blossoming again i am also inspired by the birthing process and the sacredness of the womb um i really like what you showcased the creating of mehndi art on your own um tummy when you were pregnant that was so beautiful i'm also inspired uh, in way way inspired by the birth process i, I wonder it, it's it's a kind of a mystery what the child goes to inside the womb so i created a kind of a womb here and a little child child embryo over here and the cord going up the umbilical cord going out and turning into a lotus and a blossoming lotus there over there so it it has been a very meditative thing for me how a child is in the womb always sleeping and is always meditating and it's always nourished as very much inspired by uh, javechand meghani who is a gujarati poet who is a national award winning poet he's got written a very very famous song kasumbi no rang now within that poem there are a few lines which which says 
મારી જનનીના હૈયામાં પોઢણતા પોઢણતા કીધો કસુંબી નો લાગ વિચ ઇઝ વાઇલ્ડ રેસ્ટિંગ ઇન ધ હોમ ઓફ માય મધર રેસ્ટિંગ વિથ ઇન ધી હાર્ટ ઓફ માય મધર આઈ વોઝ આઈ હેડ ધી ફ્લેવર ઓફ કસુંબી સો આઈ વોઝ આઈ ફોર મી ઇટ્સ લાઈક બેપ્ટાઇઝિંગ વાઇલ સ્ટીલ બીંગ ઇન ધ હોમ આઈ વોઝ બેપ્ટાઇઝ વિથ નેક્ટર સો આઈ રોટ ધીઝ લાઇન્સ એન્ડ આઈ ડ્રૂ અ પ્રેગનન્ટ વુમન સ્ટ્રેચિંગ હર સેલ્ફ અપ ટુ સ્મેલ ધી મૂન ધ ફ્રેગરન્સ ઓફ ધ મૂન so moon is a sim- has uh, as multiple layers of symbols one is moon is feminine energy the motherly energy it is also symbolized as a child in some you know a connection between mother and child so this lady the pregnant lady is stretching herself up to smell the moon to drink the nectar from the moon in ayurveda moon is also the symbol of somras so therefore the child within the womb is being nourished by the moon and the mother and it, it is being baptized with nectar white and it is still in the womb so that's the whole concept behind this sketch on uh, pencil it's a pencil sketch on handmade paper this is a photograph of a little girl so whether i do a sketch or an installation or a floor art the idea is to be meditative dreamy mystical so there's a little girl who was playing in the beach and i kind of clicked that image and this is the girl the portrait yeah and with nature also i try and think uh, uh, because my my natural capability is to contemplate so when i one day i woke up and the plant next to my bed had a withering leaf so the line which came to my mind was when you see a withering leaf caress it gently and thank it for having lived a magnanimous life sucking dark carbon under the scorching sun offering generously and un- unconditionally pure fresh air to our world so that's a kind of response creative response to nature where even it is wilting or where the weather is autumn when the flowers are drying the petals are falling off you know flowers are falling the petals are drying so i collected some dried petals in fact one from one of my installations um, and filled it filled it up in this japanese ceramic bowl and placed a dried leaf there and the lines which came up to my mind was these are parched orange petals sunburned golden leaf they are resilient autumn radiating love the autumn even in autumn it's so resilient it continues to show um, sharing its own color and its own charm so that's how i respond creatively to autumn and i also have a video of this ritual but i'm currently showing only a still image this is a view from one of my office spaces while i was working in downtown mumbai and this is what i could see from the 20th floor of the office a, a huge urban jungle and i the lie i felt that why do we most people who are in the spiritual field a uh, kind of uh, detest concrete jungle why can't we have compassionate view towards the concrete jungle therefore i wrote this this, this line with reverence reserved for gods i have learned to touch with gentleness this cold steel and this fragile glass of our concrete jungle you know having compassion even to towards people who work in this urban concrete environment and uh, and in this concrete jungle why can't we have compassion and gentleness towards that as well that is the whole idea behind this so it's a work of photography and a poem combined beautiful yeah so um would you would you like to share some of your work now ruchi uh, uh you want i share my screen and share next some other works yeah with pleasure i actually go deep inside the, your last work it was really very fragile and very uh, important question today to ask uh, uh, about the way your approach towards the urban city it was really touching <laughs> thank you okay. well i would like to share uh, yeah some of my other works which are more about um, different uh, medium i have exploited uh, with uh, with the kind of certain certain times it's like a kind of a humor which is there i will say uh, well this is a work which i have done for photography the the work was simply to attach a long uh, hair braid as long as i can to touch the sky and it was more like searching for the opportunity like we always go 
to think that something is up there which will give something so i said okay let me just collect it like when i was child and trying to throw the stone to collect the mango from the tree it was almost like the same gestures i did only thing was nothing was visible but there was a kind of a hope and uh, i the viewers were uh, actually expected to see the final photographic work so i call this performance photography as action survive you might be wondering that it is not in a studio so probably some have seen when i'm doing these sections so i want to little share that people were there who were traveling uh, by car so they can see me doing something weird but only for few seconds and they were not going to stop <laughs> to ask me because they are driving they are engaged in their own actions so it was very interesting a kind of a freedom i was having to to search for the opportunity to survive <laughs> so well you can have i have actually series of uh, three um, laminated uh, on bido it's like a uh, photographic works which are in the series of three especially this one if i try to zoom maybe you can see that it was raining and the rain drop was was quite um, thick so i could capture them in the um, the photography so actually uh, the the series is more like for me how to draw on the empty space so the the hair braid again become a very linear uh, drawings uh, with the black lines uh, and the rain was perfect because it was uh, making dynamism in my depth of the photography interesting oh, yeah well this one is something which is actually done in 2018 uh, in one uh, chateau it's like a castle but the castle was become a kind of a, inside it become kind of a office they try to mix this two urban and uh, we can say renaissance architecture together to to do something out of it and i find that there there was something which was empty inside which was allowing me to do some kind of uh, uh, again the fictional formulas so i have in the beginning i begin like the left side you can see and slowly by slowly i begin to draw my traces of my gestures and it arrives finally to the end to the right side of the the image here is one of the detail of my drawing here is uh, actually uh, i would like to uh, actually share i'm sharing this work especially because i begin to ask question about uh, what is stage and what is a place of an audience how the viewer see what is the distance between artist and the viewer what is the distance between the canvas frame and the people who are just outside the canvas there is always a kind of a boundary to compose something for artists it's necessary to have a boundary but it should not block the viewer to to engage or to enter inside so this work was actually in treviso in a very small city beside venice which uh, the the gallery invited me uh, to do a performance with some kind of um, uh, installations i and they also told me that Treviso is a city where since last 30 years nobody has done any performance art so the public was actually coming to see after long time and uh, so my actually uh, as my I, as i explained you earlier i am trying to implement the pythagore theorem and i try to find the perfect circle to finish my half cone or uh, one fourth cone when i finish that i have actually detached my hair from the ceiling and i invited the public to make the traces of uh, the movement of my hair which i offered them and try to see what it gives as a drawing if you keep the tension perfect the between the hair what it gives so just after i left the room uh, the public has made this uh, four circular forms on the wall which i turn i come back after a few minutes and i have seen it so this is what is been displayed in the gallery was actually um, ephemeral drawings made by public so that they as the city is very small and people will see their work in the gallery 
uh, with um, questioning also what we can uh, do more to the surroundings and how we have documented that time of the gesture with this kind of um, eng engaging ourselves in certain practice. So it was also, I'm searching something which should be universal. Though we have gone through certain kind of study, certain kind of vocabulary as an artist we develop, but it is something which should be simple, universal, and uh, the most important of uh, what I feel today is this collective experience that once I bring certain kind of uh, elements, I want to offer to the public and, and learn something out of it, how they can also feed my art practice. So this is the one of the last work I would like to share. It is done last year in 2019. Um, it was actually a um, very uh, specific uh, movement, which was a contemporary art fair. Uh, where there were many, many artists were actually ex ex doing an exhibition around me. We were around, I think, uh, I will not say anything, guessing around 300 artists, but 50,000 people visit this place. So there are like fluidity of the people. So I have put these two uh, wooden panels, which was just attached with the hair braid of uh, 34 hair braids. And I have also given them a possibility that they can draw different colors they choose and just try to find the extreme tension and see what they can draw and most of the time it was circles with charcoal to chalk with different dimensions one thing which i added inside is that i have given them gopro camera so that they can attach on the hand on the on the head or any part of their body in the leg and they try to film when they are making this drawing. Even if this drawing lasts for four seconds, idea is that they are engaged actively and passively to draw and document their own gestures. And whatever they film was being projected in this uh, another surface where you can see a lady who is trying to experiment with the lights. So this is how it looks in almost in the end where uh, more visitors come, the it feed my canvas, so it's like it's a wooden board with the particular uh, dimensions and colors and especially this temporality, which I'm trying to understand. Interesting to see how a viewer interacts with one's work of art. <laughs> I'd like to show you one of my work of art where uh, there's a lot of your audience interaction. May I? Hmm. Um, can I, will you stop? I can, oh, yeah, sorry, yes. Can you see radiance? Yes. Okay. So um, this cultural installation was done for Kalagoda Arts Festival. Uh, Kalagoda Arts Festival in Mumbai in 2012. Um, a lot of artists are invited uh, uh, to display their works of art on the streets of the art district in Mumbai, which is the Kalagora Arts, uh, Kalagora district. Um, and this particular sculptural work came to me, it was kind of completely downloaded from above. So it was a completely channelized creation. I wouldn't say it is, there's anything of my ego or myself in it. You know, I kind of, the concept just came and I got it uh, implemented uh, in, this, in this manner. Um, so these are the eyes of the sculpture and the line which came to me was there's this throbbing light within which seeks but one glance to burst forth into divine radiance. Even if you give a little bit of attention to your light within which is there, it's a small, your, your atma, your soul which is there in the heart, which is a tiny, they say it's just the size of a thumb. And it's in your heart, and if you just give it a little bit of attention, it kind of radiates itself. So that's the idea. So this person is an uh, this is the face of the sculpture, and he is an ordinary person who has discovered his inner radiance by expressing all his good qualities. You know, he's still bound by earthly uh, responsibilities, duties, and maybe he's not perfect. There's something which is holding him. 
with these this coil our coils are kind of holding him uh, down to the earth and yet he is rising above that and expressing his good qualities and therefore shining bright in gold and he is also inviting others to experience the same nice good qualities within themselves and express them so he's kind of invite extending his arm in arms in an embrace and and in an invitation to you know uh, to the audience and the person is supposed to stand in front of it and look into his eyes and feel that embrace so the viewer becomes a part of the sculptural installation the experience is a part of the uh, original idea you were is a part of the original idea of the sculptural installation you know the experience of embrace the kind of invitation to raise your consciousness and be more loving more kind more generous and it was so good to see you know without telling anyone people would want to try and hug this person i had called it radiance they would come and hug the radiance they try and imitate him even right from children to just about anybody you know especially children were very very attracted and they would want to imitate and touch him and experience in school kids would just come and you know crowd around it 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 was people would i mean it's a selfie culture so people would want to take a lot of selfies but that's all right you know people are kind of drawn towards this work of art a lot of people told me that they saw it from far away a golden man and they came running to see it you know this person is so meditative it's so lost in his in the eyes of radian such a good connection this person is lovingly hugging these two young girls are having a good time this this couple is is kind of experiencing the love uh, of the sculpture there are dancers in the evening who come and dance around the sculpture you know there is this person when there was nobody he just took a chair and sat there and meditated there so that was very very fulfilling for me that a work of art which is which is a channelized work of art it's a work of creation and it it's just come there you know it's manifested through me and i'm so grateful that this kind of work manifested through me and it is inviting people to raise their consciousness so when when people interact with this work of art and it helps them to raise their consciousness i get a very i, I feel very very satisfied and fulfilled is it's like a, my life purpose is being fulfilled you know yeah so it's it's, it's, it's very, very interesting uh, to talk to yeah. you and uh, it's it's i mean to understand your process right from the time you were in baroda and you were influenced by temple architecture and your bharatanatyam dance and the way it is moved you moved to france and the entire interpretation has become so contemporary and so beautiful you know so unique and so deeply your own expression very very contemporary and the way you invite people to experience it as well so it's been a very fulfilling talk for me a, a good art dialogue uh ruchi so i would like to thank yeah but but i thanks thank you so much for this invitation uh, to create this platform of dialogue uh, i was also uh, quite touched by uh, the photographic work you have shown me and the, the relation and how you have um, bring towards the the question of what is the purpose of making art it is it is uh, the way you have shared it and the way you have talked about the relation of the public and even if it's in a public space in urban space with the street light those the, those subtle quality uh, which you were searching for and how you achieved it it is uh, really really um, i really appreciate it and i'm very happy to have this conversation with you thank you ruchi namaste <laughs> thank you